David Wheeler is one of the owners of Peak Mountain Camps, a family-owned business based in Spring City. With over 30 years combined experience in the RV industry, the Wheeler family has been committed to building the best camps and the priceless memories that come from enjoying them. They build the best high quality four season trailer in the industry. David and Julie Wheeler, who is here in the back, thank you for joining us today, Julie, have been married for 36 years. They have four children and six grandchildren. They love the outdoors and spending time with their family and they currently live in Mount Pleasant. So please welcome David Wheeler. Okay, first, first of all, I wanna thank Russ. Um, I met him a couple months ago and, and I didn't know I was baiting myself into coming and speaking, but I, I'm excited at the opportunity and I hope, I hope that something I share today will help you in making some choices in your life. Um, he, he said, just start at the beginning and kind of talk about your journey in business. And um, so I graduated high school in 1982. Um, and I didn't really know what I wanted to do. How many, how many in here are freshmen? All of you? How many sophomores? Sophomores, you know what you want to do? Still not? Freshmen, any idea what you want to do? A few yeses, a few noes. Why, why entrepreneurship? Why, why are you interested in doing a business or being an entrepreneur? To be, my boss. To be your own boss. Okay, super. Any other? Money? It's a broad spectrum, so I can find more than all of those Okay. Any others? Build something I'm proud of. Build something you're proud of. Okay. Um, yeah, you get you get to be your own boss. Um, you usually get all the bonus hours you want, and you always have employees. So in 1982, I graduated from high school. Didn't really have any idea what I wanted to do. So I joined the military, and. I spent 16 years in the military. I joined the National Guard and spent 16 years in the National Guard. And so I went, the, the summer after high school, I went to basic training and uh, got home and school had already started, college had already started, and so I thought, well, I'll just get a job. And so I, I got a job working for a concrete cutting company uh, that was working on the Manti Temple and the renovation of the Manti Temple. And I was working up in the stone quarry, cutting the stone to, uh, for the new add-on and to replace some of those stones that were broken. And when we got done in Manti, um, I went with the company to Salt Lake. And I, I worked up there for, oh, probably a couple of years and really didn't care, no offense to those who live in the Salt Lake Valley, but really didn't care for that. And I, and I had grown up in Draper um, until I was a, a freshman, sophomore in high school. And then we moved down to Fairview, where my dad was from. Um, so I, but, you know, back then, Draper was kind of like Ephraim. So I went up there and decided, you know, that's not for me. And there was a fast food drive-in that was coming available in Mount Pleasant. 
And I told my dad, I says, hey, let's, you know, let's lease this building and start a, a restaurant. And so we did that. And um, I had started dating my sweetheart in 1984. Probably about a month before she graduated high school, we started to date. And it took me two years. I wasn't a very good salesman. It took me two years to convince her to marry me. But we got married um, in 1986. And we had started this restaurant in 1985. We'd gone into a 10-year lease. And... Um, was doing this. It took a lot of work. Um, I was working two jobs. She was working two jobs. But we were trying to build a business. And we had a dream and a vision of what we wanted to do. And so we continued to do that and then in 1990, I think, I was activated to go to Desert Storm. And so I had a week notice to get ready to deploy to go to Desert Storm. So I left our business in the hands of kids your age. I had one full-time lady that worked for me that was older. Everybody else was teenagers. Um, bless their hearts, they did the best they could, but they didn't really know, they didn't really know anything about food costs, wage costs, or anything like that. So we were gone to Desert Storm for about six months, and we came home and I, I didn't want to continue to lease the building. I wanted to buy it. Um, and I approached the owner. Previ previously, previous to my being deployed, I had approached the owner to see if we could buy the building. And he, he said, oh, continue to pay me what you're paying me for 20 years, and it'll be yours. And I did the math, and I didn't, I didn't like that. And so a piece of property, so the, the building we had was on the north end of Mount Pleasant, just you come into town, just kind of south of the drive-in theater there. And uh, this piece of property came available right in the middle of town. And I didn't really have any idea what that would do for our business. But I knew I wanted my own building. And so I approached the owner of that property. And he was, he was to the point in his life where he was partially retired. Um, he didn't want to pay capital gains taxes. And so he was good enough to carry the contract on that property for us. And when I got activated, he came to me and he says, he said, Dave, if you can't make the payments while you're gone, he said, don't worry about it. We'll, we'll get that figured out when you get back. So I deployed and come back and, and bless our employees' hearts. They lost a lot of money while I was gone. <laughs> so we came back to, um, you know, financial hardship. And, and so it took us a couple of years to get back on our feet where we needed to be and to pursue building a building. So in 1995, 
we built a new building, we moved into a new building. Um, it's currently Wheeler's Drive-In, they're not pleasant. Um, we actually just sold that here a couple of years ago. But we did that for 35 years. And we were our own boss. We made a little bit of money. But it was like, it was like having a second wife. <laughs> I was tied, I was tied to that. My family was tied to that. Um, as my children were growing up, I, I convinced them that Disneyland had burnt down. <laughs> because we didn't have, we didn't have the time to go. Um, the only thing worse than a restaurant or food business is a dairy farm. <laughs> so don't, don't be dairy farmers. And if you're thinking about a restaurant, really think hard. I mean, it's a super industry, it's growing, um, but there are a lot of challenges that come with it. There are a lot of challenges that come with entrepreneurship. Um, but if you've got a dream, follow that dream. And work hard. Work hard to get what you want to get. And accomplish what you want to accomplish. Okay? Um, in, in 2015, I, I came home from work one day and I, I told my wife, I says, hey, I kind of want to start slowing down because my days were, like when we first started in the business, I would get up and go milk cows or work at the bakery at 3 o'clock in the morning to get down at the drive-in at 6 or 7 o'clock at night. That's what my days were like. So I, I came home and I says, hey, I want to kind of slow down a bit. I said, we got the help that we could probably do that. But I just don't want to be there all the time, like I've been there. And uh, a couple, couple months later, uh, my, my brother approached me and says, hey, would you like to start another business? So I, I thought about that. I looked at it. And we decided that that was something that we wanted to do. And so in 2017, we started Peak Outdoors. And we, we initially started just doing RV repair. Um, that was something we could do, you know, right now and bring money in right now. And, but we always had in our, in our mind the vision to build trailers. And, and so we were working towards that. Um, I had already purchased a piece of property that we are located at now. I purchased that piece of property probably 15, 20 years previous to to that. Um, so I already had the property. We built a building and we started that business. Um, but for the 35 for the 35 years of, that I was in the restaurant business, um, we never we never went backwards as far as gross income. Every, every year we improved for 35 years. And in 2018, when we were supposedly in this recession, 
or 2008, I mean, from 2008 through 2011, those up to, up to that point, those were the three best years we'd ever had. The three best years we'd ever had. Um, so we started Peak Outdoors. We, we got established, and then we started building the camps that we build today. Um, if you want to look at some of those, you can go to Instagram. You can go to our Facebook page. Um, you can go to our website, Peak Mountain Camps, and look at, look at the trainers that we build. Um, we currently employ 10 employees. Um, full time, we, I don't know, we'll probably do somewhere around $2 million this year in sales. Um, but it all starts with a dream. It all starts with a dream of, of what you maybe want to do. Um, we did that because we love this valley that we live in. And we have children that we want to stay here with us. They grew up enjoying the things that we love, and they love those. And so, you know, I, I was to the point in my life I probably could have retired when we sold the drive-in at 57 years old. But I wanted... I wanted to help my children to be able to raise their children here. How many of you are from Central Utah? How many of you are from out, outside of Utah? Where are you guys from? Vegas. Vegas? Vegas? Arizona. Colorado. Colorado? Idaho. Idaho. How do you like Utah? You can be honest. <laughs> you don't like Utah? Really? You don't like the small town stuff? You're here to play football, basketball, what? Football. It'll grow on you. Are you fresh? <laughs> You're a sophomore and I haven't grown on you yet. Oh, you was? This is your first year of snow college. Have you noticed anything? Have you noticed anything about this community? I mean, since I've been here, I've had to like eat a lot more than it's all I've worked up. Why? I mean, uh, have nothing else to do but explore. Have you have you noticed what you what you see and what you get from the members of this community? You ever walking down the street and you get a wave or a hello yeah. or are they just friendly or yeah. what? They're a lot more than people who are in Minnesota. Yeah. 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 Um, no, you know, this is, we love this valley. We love to live here. And so we wanted to do some things to provide that opportunity for our children and our grandchildren. Um, could we have gone other places and made more money? Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, people, in, people in this valley don't know what a recession is because we've always lived in a recession. <laughs> you know? Um, but it, it's, such a, it's such a great place to raise your children. And, you know, a lot of the things, a lot of the things that drove me to do and make the decisions that I've made has been based on my faith. And I might share, I might share some things here that may make some of you a little uncomfortable, and I hope it doesn't. But that has been the basis of everything I've done. 
It's been the basis of every decision that I've made in business. And it's been the basis of everything and what drives us to do what we do. Um, you know, we, we see our children grow up in this valley, but there's really not any jobs for them. And so we just say, hey, you know what? It's good enough for us to raise you here, but you go to the Salt Lake Valley or you go to Vegas or you go to wherever and, and raise your children because you can't make a living here. And so a lot of what we did and why Peak Outdoors came about is for that purpose because we have, we have two boys that want to stay here. We have some of our employees that want to stay here. And, and make livings here, you know? And so that's kind of what we, we have done. Um, how long did you say we got for us till quarter to 20 after? Yeah, we've got about 15 minutes left. Okay. Any, you, I, I gotta hand it to you guys, I really do. Um, this, this is actually my first day in a college classroom. In a college classroom. So I gotta hand it to you guys for for going to college. And seeking to better yourselves and get a good education. Um, I've got a good education, I'll guarantee it. The School of Hard Knocks. I've learned a lot in education at the School of Hard Knocks or education at Snow College. It all costs money. You know, it all costs money. And uh, are, there, are there some things that I maybe would have done differently? As I look back, yeah. You know, I should have probably got a little education in finances. I probably should have got a little education in business. You know, so if you're looking to be an entrepreneur, those are things that you want to do. Okay? Get a little education in business. Get a little education, get a little exposure to advertising and to bookkeeping, and those type of things are going to benefit you as you do that. Um, has anybody got any questions? Two million gross. Okay. I wish two million net. This is for the restaurant business? This will be for Peak Outdoors. So the restaurant business, when we first started the restaurant business, um, we were probably grossing... Let me show them some pictures of the website. We were probably grossing 300000 a year in the restaurant business. And when we sold that, when we sold that business, we were doing $1.1 million when we sold that. Um, and so we had grown a lot, but it was a lot of work. And, uh, you know, that, that's something that, you know, if you, if you want to be an entrepreneur, you're going to have to be willing to work hard. You know, I'm, I, I'll be honest with you, you're going to have to be willing to make some sacrifices. And your family's going to have to be willing to make some sacrifices. You know? Uh, to be successful. So these are the trainers that we build today. Um, when we first started, when we first started in 2017, if you would have told me that by 2020, we would have orders for 30 of these trailers, I would have told you you're nuts. Right now, during, during COVID, we were out about a year and a half on a trailer, and we were finishing one about every two weeks. Currently, we're out about a year. We have 25 on order, um, and every trailer we build is custom. 
Every time we build is custom. So they're all sold before we even start to build. But the RV industry is, you know, 20 years ago when they started doing the rubber roof, they were just sending a message to everybody in the industry that we're going to start building a disposable trailer. And if you, has anybody seen, has anybody seen some of these around, old ones? Like when you're on the mountain or in the fields and see these old sheep camps? So these originated, they originated um, in the agriculture industry because they would take their sheep or their cattle out on the range and they needed somewhere to keep their herder. Okay, the guy that was going to watch over their sheep and their cattle. And so they needed something that was durable, that would last a long time, and was well insulated, but it was totally off-grid. Now, my wife, she's got an uncle, so she grew up in a family in the sheep industry. So she grew up in these sheep camps. She's got an uncle that's still in the sheep industry, he probably has 10 of these camps in his operation and he's got them as old as 1956. And they're still housing a herder in those 365 days out of the year. Now, the majority of the ones we build are 30 foot, they're fully loaded. Um, they sell for seventy to eighty-five thousand dollars. Ten years from now, if you bought one today, ten years from now, it'd sell for ninety-five thousand. They, I, I've yet to see one depreciate. Um, there's. Five of us, there's me and my brother, my two boys, his one boy, and then we've got, you know, five other guys that work for us that, that um, do us a great job. And they're, they're building quality camps. We're building them as fast as we can. Um, could we expand and build them faster? Yes. But we're afraid the quality would go down. You know, Airstream used to be Airstream. Airstream used to be one of the best on the market. Um, so for a trainer, for a trainer the size of the trainers that we build, you would be probably one hundred eighty thousand dollars for a thirty foot Airstream. And Airstream sold out to Thor about a half a dozen years ago, and they've fallen into the RV industry. Particle board, cheap materials, um, and that's not what we want to do. What we what we do is quality materials that are going to last a long time, and that's what draws people to what we're doing. It's kind of a niche market that we're in, um, but the quality of the trailers is there. And so that's what we continue to do. Um, anybody got any questions? What was the process like in developing the first trailer? Obviously, you can't just stay So my brother, my brother had already been exposed to it. He'd worked for another company. Okay. And so we actually build these trailers from the inside out. Um, all the cabinetry goes in, all the plumbing, all the electrical, all that stuff goes in before we put the sidewalls on. Okay? And then we put the sidewalls on, and then we'll skin it with aluminum skin, um, you know, and finish it up that way. But we have a CNC machine that we use that cuts out all, all the interior stuff, and then we hand do the face frames and the cabinet doors. We stain those. They're all hardwood, just like you'd have in your home. You know, any other questions, Russ? So, Dave, you mentioned that one of the reasons why you're doing this is because you wanted to employ your kids, make it so they can have a job and live here. How do you 
work with family remaining for with your brother, with your sons, you got some nephews working with that. Yeah. How do, you, how do you deal with those problems? Like, can you fire your, your son? No, or how no you I can't him? fire him. <laughs> but I kick him in the riches. Was, you know, I grew up in that generation. Yeah. You know, you know, it's, it's hard. I mean, it's not, in our situation now, it's hard, but when we first started the driving, it was hard. It was hard because um, we were young, we were immature, we were selfish, you know, so we had some family issues. Um, but you know now, and, and, and this is the craziest thing ever, when we hire an employee, they'll say, what, what time should I be here? I don't know what time you want to be here. I mean, I have guys roll in at 7. I have guys come in at 8. Like my oldest boy, so he runs hound dogs. He chases bears and mountain lions. <laughs> See, you haven't seen all Sam P. County yet. <laughs> no, it, does anybody know anything about hound dogs? Okay, so he raises and sells hound dogs. And he grew up in a family. My wife has her own business. She's a beautician. She's got her own business. So, you know, we're our own bosses, and she's my boss, but I'm not her boss. <laughs> and so our kids grew up with that. And so he, when, after he graduated high school, he went on his mission to come home, <clears throat> We had a good friend of ours give us a hound dog. And we started raising hound dogs. And so what he'll do is like in the morning, he'll go out and he'll, when there's snow on the ground, he'll look for a mountain lion track. And when he finds a mountain lion track, he'll turn his dogs out and they'll track that cat until they tree it. Okay, and he's got tracking collars, and then we build a tree and take pictures of the mountain lion and whatnot and let it go. And like this time of year, he'll go up the canyon, he'll put his dogs up on the top of his rack. So if you see a truck coming through town, it's got a rack with dogs on the top, you'll know what I'm talking about. He's going up the canyon, and the dogs will smell the scent of that bear. And he'll turn them out and they'll follow that bear until they tree it. Well, he started that, I don't know, 10 years ago. And he raises those hound dogs and he trains them and he sells them. And he's probably making 60 to 80 grand a year. Being in the mountains every day doing what all the rest of us want to do. Bless his heart, he comes to work for us. But some days it's noon, some days it's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Like today before I left, he called and he says, hey, I got a bear going over here. I'll be later. But they all show up and they all, do, they, all, they all do a good job. And they're amazed that we let them come and go like we do. But that's part of taking care of the people that work for us. So... At the end of the day, at the end of the day, you're the boss. But can you live in that business 24-7? You know? When do you stop thinking about your business? When do I stop thinking about it? When you leave on Friday, do you not think about it until Monday? When I was in the driving business, it never left. Never. It never left. It was so tiny. Even on the weekends, I mean, we were closed on Sunday, but every night at 8.30, I had to call in my bread order for the next day. And so that, that was so life-consuming. Now, peak outdoors, 5 o'clock, when I lock the door, I go home, and I don't... You know, because my kids, they kind of looked at me, they're like, you're, you're selling one business, but you're doing another one. And I said, yeah, but at 5 o'clock, I can go home. You know? Where when I went home from the restaurant, I'd get home and I'd get a call. Hey, we got a bus. Can you come and help us? Or 
so-and-so didn't show up to work, or, you know, and so, and we only lived a block away, but it, it was life-consuming, you know, and where, where with Peak Outdoors, like, like last week, I came in on Tuesday, and I says, hey, or I came in on Monday, and I says, hey, we're going to do four tens this week, and everybody's going to have Friday off, and then we're going to have Monday off, and then we're going to do four tens. And they're all like, yeah. Now, in the restaurant business, I couldn't have done that. Because during the holidays, you're there. Those are your busy times. You know, so if you're thinking about getting into a business or starting your own business, those are things that you want to look at. You know? Julie, stand up. Will you? This is my wife. She's a very patient woman. But that... That is what drives me to do what I want to do and, and do what we want to do for our family. Russ? What's that, two minutes? Okay, any other questions? How many have jobs in here? Part-time jobs? How you like working for someone else? You don't? You don't like it. <laughs> then you know what? Dream a dream and follow that dream. You know, search it out. Make sure it's going to happen. Get a really good banker and build a great relationship with your banker. Because at the end of the day, you're going to need him. And he's going to, and he's going to, he's going to help you. But I, I love being my own boss. I mean, is there times that, you know what, it's not so great? Yeah, there's times that it's not so great. I mean, there's times that I've had things planned with my family that, you know, someone had to show up to work and we had to take care of it. You know, and so, and, and so I've seen both sides of it. Peek outdoors, I could just walk the doors up and be good. You know, and I really wouldn't need to be there. But with the restaurant, I was totally tied to that and had to, had to be there and had to have someone there. So, you know, but enjoy... Enjoy your time here at Snow College. Okay? Enjoy the opportunities you have here. Take advantage of the opportunities you have here. Do the best you can to receive the best education you can and become the best person that you can. Okay? Thank you all for being here. I hope you maybe got something that will encourage you to go and be an entrepreneur. Because at the end of the day, it, it, it is good. You're, you're in control of your own destiny. So thank you for being here. Thank you very much.